Greetings, everybody. Um, uh oh, no, cannot minimize. Okay, then. Um, welcome. I am Priestess Lamiel, and we <laughs> have been having a little bit of scheduling uh, issues and um, I'm fixing it. Uh, right now. So I had changed the time. I realized I changed the time on the wrong event. So we're now scheduled to start at 9.05. Hopefully I did not confuse the hell out of everybody. So I apologize if I have, I am fixing it. Um, had a lot of events going on over the last two weeks. And um, at 11, my, um, the, uh, the second half of my uh, prosperity burn, the group burn will start. So, oh, I'm not alone, Tatiana. That's my daughter's name. Such a beautiful name. Thank you. Hello. How are you? I'm well. So, yes, I have, we have a crazy schedule going on and I've accidentally changed the time on, um, <laughs> on this event. So I hope I didn't throw a bunch of people off, but we're recording. So if it's just you and I, then we'll go from there. Um, and I will send out the recording and because um, I do need to start the other ritual at 11. So I'm going to give it a few minutes, see if anybody else jumps on. And um, if not, then we're going to have a private manifesting session here. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> A little bit of music. We'll give them about two minutes. How about my speakers here? Thank you. 
Okay, I am just going to grab the Zoom link really quick here and send it out. Um, if I could figure out what I'm doing. Um, so typically we start with just updates, information that everybody needs to know. Um, one of the most important things is that we are changing platforms. And um, it completely switches over uh, tomorrow. So let's let me open this up. Let's see what I look like here. My video. Here we go. Hello. So be nice if I did some things with my hair. I look like a like I've already been outside <laughs> in the moon. So I'm gonna just touch on really quickly the um, some of our housekeeping stuff. We are changing platforms and changing platforms because we did a lot of really great moon site uh, circles. We only had one in person and this coming year, we want to do mostly all in person, except for the really cold winter months. So um, we're changing to the Patreon. Everyone, the the link is in um, is in the group. I've sent out the emails, and if you're on my email list, you can get it. Um, but also, we've come across a lot of people who have joined and don't have Facebook. So they can't access videos and, and replays and, and things like that. So in the Patreon, I can still share it in Facebook, but people who don't have Facebook have an opportunity to get in and do, you know, be a part of everything and see the extra videos and trainings that I was making and um, not really miss out. Also, um, the Patreon is a paid platform, but those fees go to buying the supplies for the live events so that when you come to a live event, all you're purchasing next year is your kit um, with your candle and herbs and whatever you need for the ritual that we're going to be doing. Um, and we can buy the tents and we can buy the tables and the blankets and the cushions and all the, the things that, that are needed um, for the event. So typically, what I'm going to do, we're going to, um, I'm going to play the sound bowl so we can open the circle. Let's see, it is recording. Our last full moon did not get recorded. So I want to make sure everybody gets that. Um, I'm going to send this out to everyone as a message. And then 
this group will close probably tomorrow. So if you're watching the replay and wondering where we went, <laughs> you can find us on Facebook and I'll send the link for the Facebook and I'll send the link for the Patreon. I just wanna be really, really clear so everybody knows what's going on and I didn't disappear. We're just changing, changing platforms. That typically helps us center, clears the space and the energy. I'm going to pull a card, I'll pull two cards for us as a group for this um, moon cycle, this new moon cycle, which is very exciting for me. Oh. Um, that was not it. Much to celebrate this moon cycle. That's the card right there. What's our general message? Okay. So we got the new moon in Sagittarius, which means that luck is on your side. So whatever it is that you are going to be manifesting it's so funny, every time I do moon work, I'm wearing this t-shirt. Uh, it's like my favorite shirt to work with herbs. And I didn't realize that until I started making videos for the moon circle. And then I was like, I didn't make those on the same day, but I'm wearing the same shirt every time. So I'm gonna pull another card just to give a little more clarity about the luck. But whatever it is that you are manifesting um, in this cycle, know that luck is on your side. The card that I pulled that gives us a deeper understanding is ascending. Can you see that? So that really means that if you're setting an intention for um, leveling up your life, for moving up, for expanding, for doing more, being more, right? It's different than having more and trying to draw things in. But if you are setting an intention for having more, being more, doing more, then truly um, you have luck on your side, right? The energy of the moon is going to help you manifest and expand on whatever it is that you are um, setting your intentions on and growing with. So now what I want to do is usually... <laughs> we have, um, there's a regular kit that you can purchase for, to do at home. This month, what we did were the oils. And I just wanna talk about the oils because when you have the oils, you can use any candle. Now, my personal candle, every new moon is the goddess body candle, which just happens to be my favorite because I feel like, you know, she represents me. I can hold the candle, romance the candle, put all of my energy in, and intuition or uh, intention into the candle and dress the candle and spend a lot of time with it over the three days leading into the main um, new moon date and, um, and then set it and let it burn for the next three days. But the oils that I use always during the new moon is um, this one, which is my uh, magical vixen oil. And because the new moon, we are calling things in, we are calling in whatever it is that you want. You can manifest during a full moon, but it's not the same. The full moon is really about releasing. And as it goes on its cycle, it's taking things away. So we're during that time is when you are releasing things that are holding you back from the completion and the manifestation of the goals that you set, the intentions that you set during this new moon. 
So magical vixen is sort of like, um, it has a little bit of energy of kind of fuck you, pay me, but give it to me now. Like I want it now. This is a really good oil for solving issues that you are having right now, immediate issues, car breaks down, um, kids need something for school, you know, um, in the last two weeks, I had a credit card, credit card information from two cards stolen off of the internet, right, and having to resolve those issues. This oil does that. So whether it's a financial issue, whether um, it's a smoothing it out of a situation that needs to go in your favor, that oil does that. And I always use my golden abundance oil. And you can see it has 14 karat gold flakes in it. It is, um, all the oils have crystals and um, pure essential oils. They're all charged in the moonlight, but Vixen is an attraction oil. This is an abundance oil, right? And when you use an oil that is for um, attraction, you're drawing the stuff to you that you want. The abundance oil is for stable, consistent abundance. And so the two together, right? You're creating a situation where you're working on having some consistency so you don't have those emergencies, but you're also taking care of what needs to happen right now. So like tonight in the prosperity burn, both oils are used um, because we're calling in all of the things that we want, the things we want now, the things we want 30 days from now, the things that we want next year. Um, so hi, Lexi. Um, so this oil is about drawing that in, right? And then abundance, the golden abundance is about stabilizing so that you have a consistent flow. If you have a business, if you work on commission, um, the two oils combined together brings you in those sales right now, brings you in those orders right now, and then allows for it to be consistent and stable. And I'm sharing all of this because when we're in the new moon, we're manifesting and a lot of people are trying to manifest money or love or anything like that. Even magical vixen works well or any attraction oil you can mix with like a love or a bend over or something like that because it makes it happen very fast but usually we're drawing in things to us and you want to consider the layering of things right so you may have because we've had a lot of people who are like oh what i need right now is 900 dollars," but you have 28 days, this whole moon cycle, like you could do $900, you know, four or five times. So you solve when you're manifesting, right? You solve your immediate issue, but also set intention for the long term. Set your intention so that you get what you need now and that you're covered later instead of always trying to just fix the current situation. So I hope that that kind of explains using some oils and the oils that I recommend during the new moon. This particular new moon, I am going to be for personally, I'm going to be doing the, um, a check ritual. And so there's a couple of, I don't think I have it over here um, in this room. So there's a couple of stages to that. So a check ritual is drawing in money. So the very first thing that you wanna do when you're drawing in money for manifesting is um, clean and bless your wallet. So if you have a wallet, if you're calling in money, if you're calling in just abundance in general, clean out your wallet and then anoint everything in your wallet with some type of attraction or money oil. Clean the wallet off sage your wallet, do all of the whole process. So the whole process is you're going to sage it. You're going to cleanse it with some Florida water. Then you're going to um, anoint everything. So all the cash, the credit cards, everything that you have in there. If you don't have any cash, then put some ancestor money in there, <clears throat> anoint that and leave it in there. 
all the time so that it can begin to start to attract to, for you. Take that wallet and you're gonna put it on, a, on your money altar. And I don't think that we've ever had this conversation um, this year about creating an altar for your manifesting. So if you strictly are into manifesting with the moon, I would have um, two altars, one for the full moon, one for the new moon, so that you have everything for your new moon intention in one spot, everything for your uh, full moon intention in another spot, and because those things are going to be different, right? And you can have, you can burn consistently through each of the 28 day cycles and those candles are going to be different. The oils that you use in them are gonna be different. And um, if that's what you're doing, if you have specific altars for the work that you do for the, all of the different types of intentions that you do, um, which is what I have, then you're gonna put your wallet on your money altar. If you have a new moon altar, then put it on the new moon altar, right? And if you don't have one, setting up an altar is really just having a dedicated space where you can light your candle, where you can sit or stand, um, remember your intention. If you say a prayer or you recite, um, a ritual, whatever it is that you want to do. It's a space and it's going to just hold. I always put the, all of the elements. So there's always water. Put your inset there. Um, you can put crystals um, for earth, the incense for air and your water, right? Um, and then, for example, if you're going to do a check, then you put that there. If you have a petition and then your candle, you can uh, put those on your altar. If you're attracting love, then you're going to put things that are like rose quartz and hibiscus flowers and roses. And I use hibiscus more. So rose is a, um, a master herb. So if you're ever trying to incorporate herbs into your work, you can always use a rose, any color, but if you can get them color coordinated, that's great. So like pink roses, if you're trying to draw in love, white roses, very universal. Um, I use red a lot because it's a master herb and I like shit to happen fast. Right? So I add um, roses to everything, red roses, rose petals to everything. And I also add hibiscus. Hibiscus is a very beautiful plant herb, but it is, if you've ever seen, um, or held a dried hibiscus, it is not as fragile as rose petals. And so when I want something to last and be sustainable, I use hibiscus in that particular mix. So um, during this time of attracting and bringing in money, basil and cinnamon are herbs that really draw in money and abundance. Basil also is great for protection. So um, right now I have what's called a simmer pot going. And in a simmer pot, I put cinnamon, and I put a little bit of basil and some cinnamon sticks. And so that gets the energy and the smell and the vibration of attracting with some protecting, but all through the house, right? So you start there, you have your... Um, your altar, you're gonna put some herbs on there or you can do fresh flowers or fresh herbs if you have them. Um, put your water there. And um, if you can, before all of your moon rituals, do a cleansing bath, right? Just to let things go. So during the moon, new moon, I typically do a cleansing shower. And if you're in the Facebook group, I have, the instructions on how to do like a white cleansing bath. And so I do a cleansing shower so I can then later the next day do an attraction bath so that I can really get in the mood and in the energy of treating me well and 
doing the things that I love for me so that I can become more magnetic to what it is that I want. Which is also a reminder that if you have not already, this is a really good day to put your water out for moon water. So moon water, and there's a video in the Facebook group too about um, doing moon water for the new moon and full moon. You can actually do moon water for all the different, all four of the cycles. Um, I drink mine. And this is actually the last of my full moon water, <laughs> but I put them in big half gallon mason jars. And of course you just get a glass jar, really high quality water and put it out in the moonlight for a couple of hours and then bring it in. But then you can use moon water, you can add it to your baths, you can use it to cleanse with, you can put it in floor washes, house washes, um, or you can drink it because when it's charged by the moon, it is magnetic. And so when you take that in, you're taking in that magnetic energy, which is why I drink it. And my kids seem to think it tastes better as well. So um, you have everything set up. Now I'm attracting money. So we're gonna clean the wallet. Um, I also cleaned and wiped everything down that I use to draw in money. So I use my computer, um, the desktop, the laptop, <laughs> my phone, <laughs> um, anything that I use that helps me make money. Um, if you have a job and you have a desk at work, wipe your desk down at work, just cleanse everything down first with like a Florida water and then with an attraction oil like uh, the Magical Vixen and then just sprinkle a little bit of money oil around. Um, if you have people that are nosy around where you work, which seems to be, you know, um, a regular thing, you can actually anoint uh, ancestor money, put it in your drawer. Um, I, my daughter has like a little tiny, looks like a Christmas tree, but she sticks dollar bills in it. So she has like a money tree that she puts on her desk and she anoints all of the bills. And so it attracts more money for her. So I'm going through the process because new rituals on during the moon cycle don't just start with the moon cycle right like it's the day it's the time I think at three o'clock or whatever was the exact time of the the new moon you don't really want to wait until right now to do everything so you can lead into it usually we have a seven day window for doing the work of that particular moon cycle so that's three days before three days after and then the day of so the three days before is when I took like my, my cleansing shower. And then the next day I did my attraction bath. And then I started to prepare the house <clears throat> and my workspace. And so now we're here today. And um, what I'm going to be doing is, and what I suggest for this ritual that I'm going to recommend, which is the check ritual. If you go on a Facebook group, you can get this particular check and print it out. But prior to that, and I'm sure you've seen this law of attraction, like the whole thing, right? And people write a check out and sit it somewhere and then go, oh, I hope that it comes. And it's really more than that. <laughs> Sometimes that works, truly, if you are really aligned. But if you're not fully aligned, then you need to do the work that gets you aligned, right? Manifesting, whether you're manifesting in the law of attraction process or you're manifesting in uh, a spiritual magical process. This is about your focus and about your will. And so you have to get aligned and you have to get behind what it is that you want. So I suggest that you um, open your journal and write down. And if you're not attracting money, again, you're going to do this type of process with everything. So when you take your attraction bath, um, use things that are pink, things that are associated with love, whatever colors that you associate with love. Um, when you're in that bath, you're thinking about what it is that you wanna attract and what life will be like when you have it. In magic and in manifesting, it is still an emotional vibrational game. It's emotional and vibrational because your emotions are going to determine your vibrational frequency. 
And it is the vibrational frequency that you hold that's going to allow for your request, your intention, your your um, what you're manifesting to materialize. And it determines how quickly what it is that you want materializes, right? So journal, this is my intention is to manifest, say it's $50,000. Can you get behind $50,000? You cannot, even with the strength of the moon, all the right colorings, the right time, et cetera, manifest something you do not believe in. If you don't believe you can have it, if you don't believe that it's possible, you're wasting your time. So can you get behind that? There's a lot of people, a lot of women that have come to the circle who've done private work with me and they're like, I want love, but they believe all men are trash. Hi, Tiffany, right? (laughs) So if you believe that all men are gonna do you dirty, bringing in true love is not gonna happen. So hi, Tiffany, we're talking about getting behind what your intention is for um, your manifestation for this new moon cycle. You have to be able to energetically and emotionally get behind it. So the way that you do that is you decide what what it is that you're manifesting. And you want to see what would be blocking you, what is stopping you, if anything, because it may not be anything, from aligning with that. And the way that you do that is you journal first. So if um, my example is, I want $50,000 journal. Why can't I have $50,000 right now? Write all the crap that comes up and you keep writing until you can't write anymore. Nothing else comes up. When you go back, you're going to see what your triggers are, what your beliefs are behind having that kind of money. Now, it may turn out that it has to do with the amount of money. And if you decide to set your intention on 25000 instead of 50, that you can get behind it. And I say, do that and then do it again, right? So then you still have your 50. But if you find that there's other things, think stories that you know your parents told you, family told you, whatever it is, then you have to reconcile that. And the way that you reconcile it is that is you ask yourself about each of those things. Is this ultimately true? right? What does source or universe or God, whatever term you use, what would they say to me about this? Then you create a new belief. So now you have a new set of ideas, beliefs, and thoughts around what you're manifesting. Why is this important? Because now when you print your check and you write on here $50,000 and you light your candle, And this, during this 28 day cycle, you should be in anticipation and having the expectation that this money is going to show up for you. And whenever that voice says, you can't have that, this is a waste of time. You have what you've journaled, your new set of beliefs and thoughts around having that kind of money that you can say to yourself, no, you're wrong because things always work out for me because I'm worthy of it, because my work is worthy of it, because, um, you know, me having this money serves the world or whatever it is that you come up with so that you have something that counters. Now that countering is what allows you to sway back into alignment, right? And get behind your manifestation so that you can stay in anticipation and excitement and in hope about it coming. If you write it and then go back to your regular way of thinking, it's probably not gonna come. Most of us are not that practice. The reason that we do these types of rituals is for the purpose of focusing your will. Having that candle burn is to remind you Every time you see the candle, you're reminded it's coming. It's coming. When I look at my candles, it's like, what does it feel like? When I'm burning for other people, when I see their candles, when I sit, because I do, when I sit with their candles, I am feeling the emotions 
of how excited they are when they send me messages about how it worked, how they received, all of those types of things, right? So I'm doing the energetic work for me to stay in alignment so that they can also stay in alignment. But even in my own candles every day, and I burn every day for, you know, I burn for prosperity seven days a week. It's done in a different way um, with a different focus every day, but um, that's how I keep it going. And when I stop, because life gets crazy, <laughs> right? Um, what's that saying? Uh, energy flows or attention, wherever your attention is, is where the energy flows, something like that. And it is very, very true, right? I have burned for large amounts of money and set my intention and I have manifested huge amounts of money. And then it was like, oh, I got it. And then I went off. And then when that things started to like dissipate, it was like, well, wait a minute, what's happening? What's happening is that my will is not there. My focus is not there. You know, alignment with what you want and what you're manifesting is not permanent. It's like bathing, right? Because we have since birth, we've been practiced into a different way of thinking and a, and a lack really. And so when you're doing your rituals, this is to help you stay focused. Whether you put them out when you leave and then you reburn when you come in, if that's how you do things, which you can, and it's totally okay. When you go to relight, refocus right? Get into the energy space, the feeling space of this is about to manifest. And the same if we're in the full moon, right? Okay. I'm letting this go. Imagining your life without it. Same type of thing. So it's important to get behind and stay aligned with whatever it is that you're manifesting. Because that's how it materializes. And when you, and you don't have to do it, you know, some people can only do it for the time that they're in front of the candle, but that's still more time than what you were doing before. If you can do it more often, multiple times a day, because you're home, you see the candle, you remind yourself, things like that. That's great because the longer you can hold it, the faster your manifestation um, will materialize. So I hope that explains sort of the process and, and why and what that candle is doing. In addition to that, that candle is dressed with other things that have a natural property, have natural properties that are drawing in what you want, right? So we use the moon because this right now, the moon is drawing in, right? It's an attraction energy. So we're gonna harness that energy of this attraction moon you're going to dress your candle with attraction oils. You're going to add herbs that are attracting specifically for what it is that you're wanting to manifest. And so you're using all of these elements. You, you can use the color that represents what it is that you want. You can also use your time. So like um, prosperity day, it's Thursday. So I'm going to tell you, it doesn't get much better than this. Like it's a new moon. It's a, the new moon on a Thursday. Thursday is the money day, right? And so um, you've got all of those things that layer in that are naturally herbs are going to do what they're going to do. The oils, if they're made right, they're going to do what they're going to do. The coloring draws in, it's going to do what it does. And so if you add your focus and your intention and you um, direct your will in the knowing that you can have what you want, then it's going to show up. The process of working with the moon magnifies the work that you're doing from within yourself. So are there any questions about that <laughs> before I continue? Because that was a lot. No, nope, you guys aren't going to talk to me. I'm going to be in here chatting with myself. <laughs> um, so from there, like I said, you can get this particular check um, in the Facebook group. If you don't have it, you can, I'm going to put um, my text number here. If you don't have it, um, 
you can text the number, you can send me a message. If you can't find it on Facebook and you're in Facebook, you know, just make a post and I'll tag you in where the check is, okay? So um, if you've attended one of our Moon Cycles uh, circles before, you know I like to burn everything. I'm a, I'm a fire sign and I set shit on fire all the time. So I don't burn my checks, but I do write a prayer that I do burn, okay? Um, you're gonna print your check, you're gonna do your journaling work. And then when you feel like, I can have this, I've got this, this is perfect. You may even need to rewrite what it is that you're manifesting. As you realize, um, you know, you may have some blocks, you may need to change the language that might help you. But when you start to feel good about what it is that you are wanting to manifest, then um, specifically if it's money. Now, if you're not doing money, then you're gonna write a petition. And I believe there's a video in the Facebook group on how to write a petition how to do a basic petition. Um, that's when you write your check or your petition. If you're writing just a straight petition, you're gonna write it as if it already happened. Like you're telling a story to someone. You're sharing the story about how, um, I'm trying to think of an example for you. So it was so amazing. I attended, I attended the moon circle. I got some great information. I went in and I did my, um, I did my cleansing. I did my, my focusing of my will. I lit my candle. I wrote my petition and I, and immediately I started getting orders. And before I knew it, I had $50,000 worth of orders in my inbox, right? And I was so happy and I was so thankful and then go into how it felt. Now, that is more in the manifestation law of attraction process. If you are really more on a magical spiritual side, you can, um, you would write it differently. But if you're interested in that, I will do a video and put it either on um, our Patreon or in the Facebook group for you. Um, but you also want to get into the emotions of it. And then you're going to fold that. You're going to put your oils on your petition and your check. And then you're going to fold it towards you. Whenever you are writing something and you're, you're asking for something and you're attracting it, right? This is another layer of things that help energetically draw things to you. So you're going to fold that paper towards you and put it under the candle. Uh, if you have the space and the privacy, you don't have to fold it. You can leave it wide open if you'd like and, um, and just set it under the candle and you can let it burn. So I put my check under the candle and then I write my story the way that it manifested. And I set that on fire and I let it burn. Um, I have a small cauldron, so it's fire safe because I'm not even gonna tell you how many times the fire department has come to my house. So that's how, um, how I burn everything. Um, with that, during this meditative time, I also burn bay leaf. Um, again, there is a video. We've been doing this all year. So there's videos in, in the Facebook group about burning bay leaves for um, prosperity. And um, it also helps. Bay leaf has a chemical in it. So when it burns, the chemical is released and it causes you to be relaxed and it makes you a little bit happy, kind of like a St. John's wort. So those are great to burn while you're doing your writing. And then on one of them, the final one, you can actually write what it is that you're manifesting and set that on fire too, and let that burn, let that burn out. So 
again, you have this under your candle and you light your candle. So you can do a three day, you can do a seven day, um, 14 days and 28 days. I don't sell 28 day candles. They're big, they're heavy, but you can find them at your local Botanica. They should have them. And they're, you know, they're about this big and about, well, you guys can't even see, but it's taller than the standard seven day and wider, but they'll burn all month if you like. I prefer to burn for three to seven days and then that way I can read the working. <clears throat> so probably next month, the month of December, we're gonna be doing four rituals, one for each of the moon phases um, each week, because I want to help people get prepared for whatever their big manifestation is in the new year. And so I'm gonna be going through the ritual, which I do typically um, in, on these lives. But like I said, we've had so much going on with um, the day of the dead going on. And we did a whole uh, Santa Morte, um, nine days of prayer leading up to that. And then um, Halloween and then, um, and some of my prosperity burn clients actually start it um, on the day of the dead instead of tonight. So way too much <laughs> for, for me um, for tonight, but the plan has always been to do the check ritual. So if you guys have questions about the check ritual, oils, um, herbs that you can use, or if you're not going to be manifesting money and you're going to manifest something else, if you want some suggestions, I am happy to share that with you. And I'm not having cacao tonight, which is usually what I'm having, but cacao, uh, <laughs> cacao keeps me up till three o'clock in the morning. So I had to cut back <laughs> on late night cacao during our rituals. Um, cause I'll stay up all night. So, and if you'd like to do cacao during your ritual, which I really, really highly recommend because it is such a high, um, the recipe on how to make it is in the Facebook group. So there's a whole video that explains it. Um, some of our kids did at one point include cacao or um, blooming tea. So I explain to you how to make it. Mine's is a little spicy. Um, so that in and of itself can be part of your ritual, preparing your tea, preparing your cacao and sitting and sipping on that while you do your internal work. Never try to do a ritual or manifest without doing the internal work. You're less likely to be aligned with what the outcome is. Now, over time, you can do internal work and you can check in with yourself relatively quickly. Um, if you do work on a daily basis, it's gonna be easier to get aligned and feel if you are in alignment with what it is that you are trying to manifest. And so then you know if you need to go ahead and, and do the work. The other thing is, depending on how big, since there's no questions, I'll share this. Um, oftentimes, for example, someone wanted to manifest a house, right? And so, um, they asked me to do some work for that. This is a very typical request. If you are trying to manifest something and like maybe right now you're trying to call in a house or a new car or something like that, there are layers to things. And so sometimes it is better to do some work and set intentions that are smaller that lead up to the actual one. So if it was a client, what I did first was get them to do a cleanse, get them to do some protection, um, talked about what it is that they want, got really clear on what they want. So cleanse and protection was one candle, well, it was actually two, it was a protection, a cleanse, and then it was about getting clear on what they want and what they needed. Well, one of the reasons that they were wanting the work was because their money and credit issues they thought was gonna hold them up. 
So we did work on and set intention around attracting the money and credit not being an issue. Once that started, then we focused on what kind of house they wanted, where they wanted their house, what it needed to have, et cetera, et cetera. And we started that. So we broke it down and everything eventually was burning at the same time, but we were addressing each of the issues. So when you're doing things for yourself, uh, that journaling process should allow you to address each of the issues. If you have worthiness issues, which a lot of us do, work on that on a daily basis. Because no matter what you're asking for and what you're trying to draw to you, if you don't feel worthy, it's either going to come like, you know, bottleneck. So it's squeezing through and you're getting the trickle down effect, or it's not going to come at all if you don't think you're worthy of it. Um, if you're trying to attract love, break it down, right? And into smaller um, manifestations. The other part of that is how do you know when your work is working and your first manifestation is always how you feel. So if you are in that energy of anticipation, expectation, and excitement, then you already know it's coming. That lets you know it's coming. So with my clients, I, I talk about like a, like a train, because to me, that's the easiest thing to see, like a, a toy train, right? What you want is here. What you don't want is here. And when you are in that energy of excitement and anticipation about what you're manifesting, right? The train is moving this way. Then when you start to feel like it's not working, it's not going to come, it's taking too long, the train goes backwards. And then you're like, no, it's okay. I need to get focused. It's going to be okay. And then you get on the phone and you have an argument and you feel bad and you're like, just fuck all of this shit, blah, blah, blah. And the train goes back. And then you're wondering, why is it taking so long? It's taking so long because here's your manifestation, but your emotions are your point of attraction. And so because your emotions are so back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, extreme and intensely, that's your, your manifestation is here. It never gets an opportunity to actually pull in. So you could be this close, right? And then it's like, no, it's not going to work. And you give up on it. And so stay focused, stay aligned. It doesn't mean that you have to always have a, a really good day, right? We don't, nobody has a good day every day, but, um, even when you're having a bad day, one of my favorite, probably more a mantra now than it is an affirmation is that everything always works out for me. So it doesn't matter. I had somebody break into my car and it was like, clearly they needed it because, and something amazing is going to happen because everything always works out for me. Everything is always happening for me. Nothing is happening to me. Um, really things happen because of me right? You are the reason that the things around you are happening or not happening. And so when you feel that way and you believe that, then you, it's easier for you to adjust yourself so that you can get what you want. And that works even with other people. I have a relationship with someone who <laughs> on a lot of levels is a person who, you know, some people think is hard to love. But here's the point. I set my intention and my set point is that I only am getting the good from that person. And so when they don't have that to offer me, they don't show up. And that's an intention. And that's work that I have to do every day. <laughs> Sometimes they show up just, you know, like clockwork in the complete opposite capacity of how I want them to. But you are creating your life. Your ritual work, your spiritual work is determining how you live and what you see. But what you see today is a result of what has manifested because of how you were yesterday. So don't let today I'm broke mean that tomorrow you're going to be um, things. Yeah. <laughs> 
So um, don't let being broke today stop you from being in anticipation and excitement of the money coming, right? Because, because um, today's circumstance is really about yesterday, right? And the energy and the vibration that you were holding on to yesterday. So um, if you stay in anticipation long enough, 24 hours, um, things will change, right? I have a training coming up called Instant Manifestation. And um, hopefully if you guys are following me on other social media or if you're gonna switch over to our new Patreon platform, you can be a part of that because um, I am gonna do it live. And the reason, and I'm talking about it now because we are manifesting, right? And I had a really, really bad week. <laughs> Um, a few weeks ago, but even on my worst week that I've had in a long time, I had instant manifestations, intentional instant manifestations happen four times. And I thought, wow, I'm a long way from where I used to be, right? Because now today, like my worst day ever today, 10 years ago would have been one of the best days of my life. So you know, you come, you, you work through it, you get better at it and you get better at it, but you can instantly manifest even through your rituals. When you do the work, when I was talking about getting aligned and getting behind what it is that you want to manifest, it doesn't have to take 28 days. That's why I was like, if it's 50 grand, but you can't get behind 50 grand, you can get behind 25, do it 25 twice, do a thousand dollars a day. Do whatever it is that you can energetically get behind and um, allow for that manifestation to happen. If you need to start at $100 a day, do that. Um, when you're trying to manifest love, first, work on self-love, right? I noticed, and, and I do, because I do teach this, I do experiments all the time. So if I decide I'm going to dedicate a whole week to just doing absolutely nothing but loving on myself, can I just tell you that everybody in my life, like clockwork shows up and pours into me in ways that I didn't even think they were capable of <laughs> because my focus is on me. And so because the energy is, I am worthy of love. I deserve to be loved. Everybody loves me. Everyone around me pours into me. They really, really do. So whatever you're trying to manifest during this moon cycle, get behind it energetically. Know that you can have it. Know that it's coming. While the flame is burning, keep saying it over and over. I can have it. I can have it. It's mine. It's coming. And feel it. When you start feeling it in your body, that's when you know it's about to manifest. So. Um, I don't know who Greg is and I panicked for a minute, but I know that everybody's Zoom thing has different names on it. So um, if you need the check, the check is in the Facebook group, or you can text me at the number that's in the chat and I will email it to you if you're not on my email list. Um, I don't think it's on the YouTube channel, but are there any questions at all? Um, this is recorded, so for you guys that came in a little bit late, um, I will send out the recording in about two hours on Meetup, and then I'm also, I'll put it in the Facebook group, and I'll do an audio on um, the podcast so that you can listen to it there as well. Any questions? No? <laughs> So in my mind, I want to believe that like I nailed it, right? Like I gave all the information <laughs> because you guys have no questions. Um, but at the same time, 
got to be. <laughs> yeah, you, I think you nailed it. I, I, I think you did. <laughs> so um, if there's no questions, um, like I said, you guys can reach out to me at any time. Someone else joined. And um, oh, thank you, Lexi. Um, if the, you guys that have just joined, if you have any questions, because I'm going to wrap it up now. Um, I'm happy to answer those questions. Otherwise, I'm going to send out the replay and then you can rewatch it um, and gather your materials so that you can do your ritual. Uh, the full moon ritual will do together. I don't know that I could stand to be outside, but... <laughs> Um, we will do it together like we did the last full moon um, ritual. So that usually takes a little bit longer because that journaling that I talk about and dressing the candles, all of that I do with you. And um, I'll be offering tomorrow the full moon kit so you can get the candle, you can get whatever herbs and whatever we're going to be using at that time. You can have that sent to you in advance. And um, yeah, everything else is in the replay. I hope you guys join us on the new platform. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, so I'm, I apologize too, because I, like I was saying, I did a whole nine days of, of live prayer leading up to the Day of the Dead. And then we had a Day of the Dead burn. And some of my, um, um, prosperity burn clients wanted to start on the day of the dead. So I had several burns going on and several events and I changed the time on the wrong, um, on the wrong event, on the wrong page altogether. So I do apologize. And, uh, so that confusion actually came from me, it's not your fault, but it is recorded and I'm going to send out the recording uh, if you RSVP'd, I'll send out the recording there and I'll put the Facebook, the Patreon and the podcast links in that email. So you can listen to it if you want, or, um, you know, catch the, the video replay in all of those different locations. And then if you guys have any questions, you know, you can reach out. I put the number, um, my text number in the chat. So you can text me at any time um, or you can send me messages on any of the, the social media. So I'm going to, there's no questions. I'm gonna play the sound bowl for just a minute or so to close out the energy and then I will end. And hopefully I will see you guys uh, in two weeks at our full moon, um, on the full moon ritual. And if you'd like to get a full moon kit, please let me know. Mail is slow right now. So the sooner we can get them out, um, the more likely you'll have them for the actual ritual. But again, remember you have a seven day window. So if you can't do it on the day of, you know, sometimes people's kit comes the day after or something like that, you still have a few days within the energy window that you can do the work. Thank you guys for being here.